Uh, and try to quickly, I know we're running out of time, and I try to quickly get to a little bit of how you can use this. Um, and some of it just goes back in what we've already said in uh, the presentation. Um, I mean, you can use it by trying to understand if you've got a product, you've got a service, by understanding where you are. And understanding that if you have a super high fidelity brand or product or service, that you have to invest in it to keep it there. Um, because otherwise, you're going to get, you know, you're going to land back in that, that area of so so convenience and so so fidelity. Something's going to overtake you. So understand, you know, build this kind of chart, understand what you have when you have it. Um, another thing you could do with, you with this is understand where you need to go, is if you understand where you are in this um, and which direction you have to go in to try to make something that's going to, um, you know, to be a viable product or service, it helps you understand what to do. Um, you can try to understand the chances for a new product by figuring out where it lands in this chart. Chevy is going to come out with the Volt, the, the Chevy Volt um, sometime soon. It's going to cost with it like $40,000 for an electric car that is not a very exciting car. To me, that's where it lands. Um, and I don't have a lot, of, uh, a lot of faith that the Chevy Volt's going to be a very successful product. And finally, um, having the discipline to play your game. Um, if you are a high fidelity product, or high fidelity company, you probably have high profit margins and you, you know, a fairly narrow market and the pressure on you is going to be, the natural pressure, the natural business pressure is to, to grow. And the trick is to understand that, okay, you can grow, but you've got to be true to what you are. Um, you've got to have that kind of discipline. If you are a super high convenient product or service or company, you probably have a mass audience, but you probably have fairly low margins and the pressure, the natural business pressure is going to be to have bigger margins, which means like trying to improve fidelity, trying to go up, you know, up market and charge more higher prices. And if you're going to do that, you have to again be very disciplined about it. Be understand where you are strongest and not try to end up up here where things fall apart. And so altogether, that ends up, you know, making the basics for um, my book. As David said, came out a few weeks ago, called Trade Off: Why Some Things Catch On and Others Don't. And uh, you know, now we'll see if trade-off can catch on while other books don't. That's hopefully it will. Um, so thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? Constantine. More about negative uh, slopes. I guess we have some. We have Hold on. Let's, let's be respectful and listen to some questions. Okay, I have a question. Yes. So let's say your fidelity bell. Let's say you have this as a coordinate graph, and your fidelity bell is let's say this, the circle x squared plus y squared equals. <laughs> you're you're gonna lose me here. Wait, I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't hear. One, one Wait, hold on, I can't, please, please be quiet, I can't, because I can't hear. Okay. So why can't you make a product that's uh, at the one, one point, rather than something at, let's say, zero, two, or two, zero? You, right, you, so you're saying if, if, that I have things only at extremes right now, why can't you? Yeah. Right, you, and you can't. I mean, this gets into some of the subtleties in the book, but there are definitely examples. What if, you know, so one of the, the competitive things that companies have done, once you realize where you are, so there's going to wind up being a, um, uh, a probably a cluster of competitors near, say, a certain spot in, on convenience. Um, one of the ways that companies can differentiate from each other is to actually climb just a little bit above the other ones on fidelity, maybe, and stay the same as convenience, um, or or try to try to beat somebody. So that, so companies do end up all over that all over that chart. What I'm saying is that, the, um, is that the clear winners in most any sector you take tend to end up being the, one who, the ones who, who end up being out in that far end of the super convenient, far end of the super fidelity place. But there are other companies scattered all over that chart that have success for very different reasons. So maybe you should have, uh, so instead of having a circular fidelity belly, it would actually be a square. It should be a square? It wouldn't be much of a Maybe, I don't know. When 
Hi. We're talking again about this. Yeah, no, well, I, and, 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 you know, and I, I'm a journalist and writer and bad at math, so, you know, these things happen. When talking about the same area, the concept, when talking about the same area the concept was referring to, I forgot how you called it, but that edge between, yeah, the mirage. I think the internet fits perfectly there. Fits the internet at, at, the, uh, at the mirage? Yeah. Um, I don't think it does. I mean, I think the internet is, this, is the super convenient um, version of things. But again, it also it's important, it depends on what you're comparing it to. You can't just pick one thing out. We wouldn't be able to be here without it. We're, the internet, we're relying on it like. I know, right, yeah. right. Because, so it's, so it's. It has some fidelity and it has some meaning. I mean, everywhere, it's in your cell phone, in your computer. Right. But again, we, it would, it would ha we'd have to be talking about, okay, what are we, what's, what are we comparing it to? Are we comparing it to. Yeah, no, 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 but you, nothing can exist by itself. You can't just take like a, you know, say a, you know, Sorry, can everyone else just a particular, so you talking? can't just take like a particular model of car and just say, so you have to decide, are you, are you comparing the, are you, are you, what, what's the bucket you're taking here? Is it all forms of communication? Is it, um, is it all forms of, is it media? Is it? Apple for one thing. Right. Well, right. So, in, like with a razor, for instance, you're saying that's the bucket. There is cell phones. Yeah. Right. So, um, with with the internet, with, with so with Apple, the you know the bucket. Well, with the iPhone, the bucket there is cell phones. Okay. With the iPod, the bucket there is ways to enjoy music. With when you're talking about the you know U2 concert at one end and um, and the the iPod at the other end. So you need to define some kind of a bucket or marketplace that you're talking about. And so what do you put the internet in, you know, when just sort of, you know, broadly the internet? Um, I mean, if you, if you put, and, and sometimes depending on what that bucket is, it, you, it might look differently about where it ends up landing. Um, so, you know, if you were to talk about, you know, talk about some, you know, particular things on the internet too, you I mean, you talk about, you know, YouTube. I mean, YouTube has succeeded because it is like super convenient video. So it, it belongs in this one place, you know, out here in a bucket of like how people, you know, enjoy and look at and share video. Um, so it, it, you need to you need to create some kind of a bracket around it to actually be able to to figure out where you place it. Okay, we got time for one more question. This mirage thing, I think, is actually more of the do-it-yourself area. It, you can't really make money off of it, but it can be obtained for most people. The internet would fit there because it's really hard to make money simply off of it. And the idea, say, with computers to get there is that um, the high fidelity concept is a really awesome, super awesome computer. But that's really sold for super high prices. Mm -hmm. But if you actually make it yourself from the pieces you buy individually, which isn't that hard to do, it's actually much cheaper. Say a desktop you make for $1,000, mm -hmm. if you were to buy that one solid piece, it would maybe be 2500 to 3000 I see that would be mean. the yeah. problem. With, the, with music, actually the situation is, and while it isn't on the system of making money because it's piracy, it is piracy. <laughs> because it, uh, without DRM, you can actually get high quality music. The reason why iTunes has terrible quality music is the DRM. Um, piracy leads to music being shared from, say, lossless formats, like oh. FLAC, right, right. where you can have extremely high quality but download it easily. Right. So you get the best of both worlds, but you can't make money off of that. That it's, the mirage only applies to a system where you're trying to make money off. Of it. Well, that could be too. And there's also um, there's also it's also the important that you realize that different um, so different demographics of people different are, are going to look at this differently. So for the mass market, the broad population is never going to build their own computer. So that's not even, I mean, so that, that, that option doesn't even land anywhere on the, on the mass market computing, you know, chart. Um, but among the kinds of people who are willing to, you know, build their own computer, that's going to create a whole different kind of chart. Because, and actually what you consider a high fidelity computer or a, or a high convenience computer or whatever is going to look very different to somebody with your set of knowledge than it does to the broad market out, out there, you know, at large. 